Man, that was awesome having James here. Um, you know, one of the reasons why we wanted to bring him in to this, uh, one, because he was personally offended he wasn't in the first couple ones. <laughs> Poor guy. We were devastated. He about was that. just like, oh, uh, it's so Life of the Lions and I'm not in it. We're like, that's a good point. He that's came out, a good I point. was on the back porch by myself at my parents' house and I was chilling and James came out and he goes, uh, Coco, the YouTube thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and I literally got my phone and I was like, oh, I texted y'all and I said, you guys got to help me out because yeah. he is offended. And I said, bro, I am so sorry. You are not in your 30s, and we talked about being single in your 30s. <laughs> you try to maneuver it to a way that... <laughs> so, yeah. That'll last for a couple more years. Yeah, it'll be fine. True. But, you know, um, we wanted to bring James on because he really does... Uh, like, he his mark on our family is, like, you can't really quantify the, mm-hmm. the impact that he's had on us. And so when people ask about our family and why we are the way we are at different times, so much of it goes back to... Um, man, this is kind of, James brought this out of all of us. Um, You know, there's so many different aspects um, that I can look back to and attribute to him. And um, we wanted to get him on the podcast just to, so everyone could meet him and and see what he's like and remember some of our favorite memories together. And uh, Coco, what, what's some things that you remember about James or things that you appreciate that the impacts he's made on our family? Yeah, I think um, something, the one reason why we wanted to do this podcast was because we really do believe that every single life matters Mm -hmm. uh, because every person is made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. And although James has Down syndrome, that doesn't define who he is. James is a person that has purpose and value. Mm -hmm. And really, when we think back on our lives, like we, when we talk about James, we talk about the joy he brings. Mm -hmm. Like we really think like, as we were talking about this and preparing, like, man, I, I don't know, we were, we're so close as a family. We think because because James brings us close yeah. and what a gift he is to our family. Our parents say, man, James is our jackpot. And we like actually believe that we're obsessed with James. We really we're are. always like, I remember recently we, uh, we had lunch at my parents' house after, after church and he had gone out with our, one of our cousins and we literally <laughs> sat there and we're like, where's James? We could not stop talking about it. And we, the whole time we're like, we miss James. We and need him to just, be here. It was just like an hour. <laughs> it was just he like was an, hour. And then, for an hour. And then last night I'm sitting yeah. on the couch couch and I'm I'm looking at Robert and I I'm like look at him just look at him oh yeah Holly and I everyone's having a conversation we're just like <laughs> we're just staring at him across the way wow. he's so cute we're obsessed with James like if you meet any any of us in public within five minutes maybe even sooner than that you, if you're like tell him who are you we're like well we really can't tell you who we are without saying who James is because yeah. James has fundamentally shaped who we are and we love him so much. We're obsessed with that boy. Yeah. yeah. He's the He's best. Awesome. Uh, I think Coco sent this to uh, our group chat, but there was uh, this picture, this old picture of Charles de Gaulle, mm-hmm. who was the this French general who like fought the Nazis back uh, in, in liberating France. And he eventually went to be the president of France. Um, he had uh, a daughter with Down syndrome, Annie. And Annie was like, it was at a time where you didn't bring kids with special needs out. It was not it was not a blessing. It was like a curse and it was an embarrassing thing. But Charles de Gaulle brought her out mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. he would be at the beach with her mm-hmm. and he would just enjoy her. And they said of Charles, they said he was more of a stoic guy. He, he didn't really talk very much, but when he was with Annie, mm-hmm. he was a different person. Mm-hmm. He was a different person. And I imagine like and I, I think I think the reason that it resonates with me is because I know exactly what Charles is going through. I think because we're different people because we know James. Mm-hmm. You know, we're we're not we're not faster because you know James. We're slower. We're you know <laughs> that dude takes forever to get out of the car. He takes forever to get into the car. His walking is just like you know he complains about walking all the it. time. He hates <laughs> he it. My dad's it. always trying to get him to jog with him, and he's like, eh, nope, not gonna happen. Um, he's like, like that's my walking business. Exactly. <laughs> not in it. <laughs> um, I don't think God put James in our life to make us more efficient. Mm. I think God put James in our life to make us more like him. Mm-hmm. And so I think in the world of like, you know, we, we have to maximize what our ambition tells us to do. Um, God gives gifts to us to say, you're not going to be as accomplished as you probably wish you could have been mm-hmm. because you got to slow down mm-hmm. and you got to accept and enjoy the gift that I'm going to give you. Mm-hmm. Like, is one of my favorite quotes in the world is John Ortberg. God is uh, more concerned with who you become than what you accomplish. Mm. And I think the gift that God gave us when he gave us James, we are more like Christ because we have James in our family. People always ask me, what's James going to be like in heaven? 
You know, like, are we, is he going to be more like us? And we're going to, I'm like, I actually think we're going to be more like him in heaven. Yeah. You know, uh, you talk to anyone who has a friend with special needs or down syndrome, like it, it marks them, you know, yeah. I think it like shows them a little bit more about the kindness of our father. It gives and you a so, glimpse into who God is. Absolutely. And it's a physical re- representation and kind of, I feel like the Lord reveals himself a lot through James. Mm-hmm. I, rem- I Every time we come home, and Coco and I live in Springfield, so we actually live down the street from my mom and dad. Um, so we'll right go, here, you live here. I, this is our house. This is our house. Awesome. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, we'll go on a walk, and I hadn't seen James since the, the day before, right? So he opens the door, and he's like, Lolly! It's like he hasn't seen me in years. And, oh my goodness, the joy that he has seeing me and making me feel so loved and seen and known it's a glimpse of how god sees us and every time we enter into his presence it's like the lord just opened that up in my mind and it's like okay he wants every moment with us and any time that we get to spend with him he's available and Mm -hmm. james always says hey i'm available always he loves to say this that's so true and he's like i'm available if you want to hang out on saturday (laughs) and i said james okay let's do it let's go to lunch you know and so it just shows me because of james I'm able to understand the concept of the Lord being available. And every time we take a moment and be with him, he's so excited. It's like mm-hmm. it's like the first time he's he's seen us and it's just the excitement and the joy is there. And it's it just helps me understand God so much better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of my favorite things is going on a trip of some sort and I have my suitcase and I'm walking in the door and he is like beside himself so excited. And I'm like, man, like, this is incredible. Like, it's so fun. But I think, I mean, James teaches us so many lessons. One of the things that I think about is, you know, if there's, if there's ever like a a fight between us or something. Which we never fight. Which we don't. Never. never. If there were to be a fight. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so if we ever have had some situation where we fought or he did something, I did something, whatever. um, And then what he does, which is just so cool, is he will come and apologize because that boy is saved and the Holy Spirit lives inside of him. Mm -hmm. And my mom also helps instruct him to go to <laughs> So, um, what Between happened? the Holy Spirit and, and Cindy Lyons. Yeah. <laughs> he has no chance. So, so what's, what's awesome is, you know, he will he will come humbly to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, and this is really to any of us. But he'll come to me and he'll say, Coco, I'm so sorry. Will you forgive me? Mm-hmm. And I say, yeah, buddy, I forgive you. He says, um, brother, sister again. I'm like, buddy, we're always brother oh, and sister. Yeah. And he goes, Fresh. And I'm like, Mm. how incredible, because if we think about our relationship with God, when we confess our sins, first John says, when we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm. So we're fresh with God anytime Mm. we confess our sin. And James, when he says that, I'm like, you're so right, buddy. We're good. Mm. And you know, we never stopped being brother and sister, although maybe you felt it. We (laughs) never stopped. And I'm committed to you. You're committed to me. We're going to be okay. And even just like the idea of, of us as recon- Christ reconciled us to be reconcilers mm-hmm. and for us to, for him to like articulate the emotion and feeling of what it means to reconcile mm-hmm. with each other of like, <sighs> it's fresh. so helpful. It's a weight off my shoulders. I feel fresh. I feel brand new. Yeah. It like shows you that, you know, man, no matter what, like. Mm-hmm. It's worth it to reconcile mm-hmm. for the feeling that you get. Well, one, it's God told us to do it. And then yeah. two, like there's no blessing when, so when you obey God. And yeah. so, yeah. yeah, I love that. One of the things that James has done with our family is he has like exploded joy everywhere. Like I feel like there is just a sense of joy that when I, when I think about just the ordinary things in life, it is something to be celebrated. Just like you're talking about, you you come to the door, that's a moment of celebration. Most people think that's a moment to open the door and then move on with life, but not James. It's a moment to celebrate something. I remember that one time, it was Christmas Eve, my presents hadn't come in from Amazon for James, and I was like, oh, he's gotta open something. And so I went to the gas station, I got Pringles, and I got a soda, and I wrapped it up. And, um, and so I wrapped it up so that he would have something to open from me. And he opened it up, and when he saw Pringles, which he already has Pringles in the house. He <laughs> and we've goes, established he goes to Dollar General every, every day. day. He loves it. Yeah. He When he saw it, he was like, what? And, like, freaked out. It was like, he stopped. He ran over. He gave me a huge hug, and then he opens the next gift. It's 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 not even, like, a two-liter. It is a single-size <laughs> Diet Coke, and he could not get over it. And ever since then, every year, I'm like, what do you want for your birthday? He's like, uh... 
remember uh, chips, soda? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. yeah. He's like, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> the simple pleasures in life. The simple pleasures in life. <laughs> but he celebrates everything, and, and everything is worth ce- – what I love, too, is we sometimes think that – life is only worth celebrating the like mountaintop moments yeah. mm-hmm. and the truth is nobody lives on the mountaintop moments all the time there's the mundane mm-hmm. there's even like the really hard moments but what James does is he celebrates these moments and he celebrates the normal moments mm-hmm. uh, yeah. every Thursday night yeah, I was about every, to say, yeah, every th- we know what exactly what's happening <laughs> every Thursday night let's just all say it on three because we all know it okay. we One, celebrate two, three trash, trash day, day. There we, we go. celebrate tr- <laughs> what does trash day mean in Springfield Missouri some of you may be wondering wow this must be something different no it's the same it's the same, it's the same exact thing uh the we put out the thing? trash on thursday night and uh by we i mean my dad you know james doesn't do it either it's just my dad <laughs> but he's like dad tomorrow trash day and he's just so thrilled that trash day is coming on yeah. friday and it's just so fun and it has taught me so much about how to embrace joy in the ordinary, yeah. in the mundane. Every single time we take a breath in, a breath out, it's mm-hmm. a gift from God. It is a day and a moment mm-hmm. we're celebrating. And James brings that out of us. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, I think uh, you know, our, our society is plagued with anxiety, depression, and there's so much to this conversation, absolutely. There, there's so many different things that, that are that factors into it. But, you know, I think one thing that will help just everybody in general is if you can find joy in the ordinary, like mm-hmm. you said, yeah. mm-hmm. like find find joy in your trash day, mm-hmm. and if you can find joy in your trash day, um, then you're going to be okay. Mm-hmm. You won't live from high to high, from from big mountaintop moment to big mountaintop moment. You can be. It, it reminds you that God is available at all times, not just the good times, the the and not just the bad times, the boring times. Mm-hmm. And if God is available to you in all these times, then there's joy mm-hmm. and there's peace, mm-hmm. and you can be okay. Yeah. And James has done a really good job of doing that and one of the things that I love that I've tried to bring uh, that I've, I've brought into my my family with my wife and my kids um, is he loves to celebrate people and he loves to celebrate his family and so he kind of started this thing with my dad and him started to do this um, every every birthday that we have we do what James has titled words mm-hmm. and words are um, a time where we're at the dinner table and we go around and every single person has to say one thing they love and appreciate about uh, the people at the table. And let me tell you guys, this at first, this was like such an icky thing for me to do. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to s- sit and tell my sisters that I love them and appreciate them. <laughs> and it was like so embarrassing for some reason, you know? And um, it was only after we did it time, and there was a lot of us in the family, so we got a lot of reps every year. <laughs> and so we just did it like time and time again, time and time again. And it got to the point where it was less awkward. And it was mm-hmm. more normal. And then it got to the point where um, it was special. Mm-hmm. And even though we all know each other and, you know, most of us are like a words of affirmation family. We love to shower each other with praise all the time. Um, <laughs> uh, it was like a special time that gave us an opportunity to honor each other. Yeah. And I've talked to a lot of people who uh, have a hard time receiving uh, the blessing of honoring them and appreciate them mm-hmm. for who they are and what they've done. Um, and what I tell people all the time is... This is not just a gift that you either have or you don't have the ability to, to honor people and to receive honor. This is a muscle that you have to work. And I tell them about my brother James. Yeah. And I tell them about words that he created that we needed to go around. And, and I hated it at first. And it's amazing. I, I love that about James. Yeah. Yeah, now now we do it for Mother's Day, Father's Day, any sort of any special occasion. Honestly, we do it too much. We, we think, did a lot. You know? We did it last night. James just decided to honor <laughs> mom and dad, and he held her hands and he just said, "Dad, you good dad? Love you. Mom, good mom, love you." You know, it doesn't have to be long, but James yeah. just loves to do it, and uh, I I love that because it's it's a muscle that we've practiced, um, and it bleeds over into the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. Like it's not as uh, icky to do that to my friends. And, yeah. you know, I, I think everybody needs um, words of affirmation uh, and encouragement. And this has just been a blessing, a sweet little overflow of what God has blessed our family with that we can bless others with. Yeah. So it's yeah. a cool practice that we get to do. And I can't help but think uh, about um, other families and siblings who have a brother or sister with Down syndrome. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's so much uh, fear in that. Um, there's so much uh, uncertainty as to, man, what is this going to, you know, parents talk to 
uh, our parents all the time about like, hey, what's this going to impact on our other kids? Uh, is it going to mess up our family? What's what's going to happen? And I think part of the reason why we're doing this yeah. is to declare that the gift that we have of James, who has Down syndrome, it is not a detractor from a family. Mm-hmm. It is the biggest blessing you didn't know you need. Mm. Absolutely. And so James has James has the ability to bless her family like we talked about. Mm-hmm. And so the the people who have family with special needs, um, congratulations. Yeah. You have one of the biggest blessings mm-hmm. that God has decided to give to you. Yeah. Uh, and it's not without challenges. Absolutely. It's not without challenges. I remember when when our dad told us that James had Down syndrome. We didn't know he was going to have Down syndrome. And when he when he told us about this, it took us a minute to even like understand what this meant we didn't really understand what it meant we just knew it was going to be different than what we thought it was going to be and and we had to walk through that and what that would look like and and even as he was a little kid I remember I'm 11 years older than James and so I remember uh holding him as a little baby and I remember just looking at him and I was so happy he was here but I was also so sad at like I don't know what his life is going to be like I'd look at his little face and I remember I would um in this moment look at him and just pray and be like God I don't know what, I hadn't met anybody with Down syndrome. I don't know what the future looks like. God, would you, would you ever let him like be able to talk? Like, would you ever be able, like, like, could you do that? Is that something that's even possible? I don't even know what's on the table with this little guy, but like, I can't imagine him not being able to communicate what he's feeling and what, so I just remember like just begging God, God, just let him talk. Would you just let him talk so that we can understand what's going on in his mind? Like, Mm -hmm. would you just help? Would you do this? And I think that, like, I think back to that was like 26, 27 years ago. And what's amazing is now, like, I look on the other side, I'm like, whoa, God, like you have answered Mm -hmm you know, exceedingly abundantly, uh, you know, beyond what we could have ever asked or imagined. Cause that boy doesn't just talk. He talks a he lot. Talks yeah. He time. explains what he's feeling more than we ever explain how we're feeling. Yeah. Like he is such mm-hmm. a gift, but there was so much uncertainty and we would celebrate every milestone. Yeah. It was funny. Even before he could talk, he taught us, he taught us how to celebrate. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, now, every time I see a baby who can hold their neck up by yes. themselves, I'm like, Whoa. What? Get we're out of here! So, like, is we're that just like, oh my baby or what? <laughs> oh my that baby yeah. is doing something. All of my kids who have like had different prog- like milestones, I'm like, man, my baby is a genius, incredible. <laughs> she can hold her head up. Yeah, <laughs> because those things didn't come naturally no. to James. Those yeah. things he worked really hard for. Yeah, you know, he would go to therapy for, and then we would celebrate. He rolled over. Yes, all of these things, and we would play with him at the house doing therapy. Coco yes. and I would do therapy with him, and it was our playtime. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I'm nine years older than him, and how old are I'm four years <laughs> older than him. I don't know. It's, it's Some, inappropriate to ask that question. Sorry, sit me there. Four years. Four years. But yeah, so he was like my little baby doll. We got to have so much fun, and we honestly had no idea what we were doing, and we didn't know what milestones he was going to reach, like you said. We didn't know, but we celebrated every moment, yeah. and we got to do, it was so funny, we became little um, physical therapists. Occupational therapists. It, it, it was Occupational awesome, too, because uh, we became, <laughs> Tiffany especially, became like uh, an advocate for people <laughs> with Down syndrome, and, and this is the 90s in the Philippines, and so Tiffany at this time, her primary goals in life were to be in the WNBA and to <laughs> be a rapper and so <laughs> tiffany <laughs> tiffany would sing uh, a rap to the same tune all the time and it changed the world words and the, so it always started <laughs> <laughs> do you remember it uh, oh I remember, I remember it. it. I remember it. I think so. But every rap that I did always started with this. Remember it was the 90s it was the 90s y'all and I was 11 years old. 96. So but it would start with this. Yo my name is Tiff and I'm here <laughs> to say that James has Down syndrome, and it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was great because Tiffany, uh, you'd be like, yo, my name is Tiffany Lyons, and I'm here to say that I love basketball, and it's okay. It would always be that same thing. You would I'm, just fill in the blank. I'm pretty sure that you even had one that Jesus is the only way. Yes, yeah, Jesus is the only way. That was the one I remember the most, yeah. I was yeah. also an evangelist, too. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. No, it's, uh, the, yeah, it's just a, it's a moment in time. Yeah. It's a moment in time. You know, and I think back on, which our parents can speak to this more, but whenever James was born, there was some challenges physically with him mm-hmm. yeah. because he was really sick. And um, 
you know, we look back on those times, but those were times where God, pro- like his God's provision was so evident in our life mm-hmm. of how not only we were in the Philippines as missionaries and we needed to get back to the States because there is more health care opportunities. And so, um, you know, they sent us, our, our pastors here in Springfield sent us back to the States for that medical help. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, oh my goodness, I remember I was four, so I wasn't in school. So I went with him and we like, right as we got to Springfield, we went straight to the hospital. Um, but man, we were just begging God to heal this little guy. And uh, he did. And like, even looking back at that and thinking about that story of how, I mean, that was a scary time, but God totally um, has a purpose for James and yeah. he, he healed him. And yeah. so like thinking about that, I'm like, man, like God is so good to even through his little life. Uh, when he first got here, it was, it was quite the, the welcome and, mm-hmm. uh, and God really showed up in big ways. I, what I love too is, um, I love that we have, uh, we have a collective purpose together. We have individual purpose and God wants to do something with our individual lives. But as a family, mm-hmm. we have this collective purpose about us. And, and one of the things is like, we're, we are drawn to people with Down syndrome. We're drawn yeah. to the special needs community. It's our mission field. Mm-hmm. And so as soon as James was gifted to our family, a new mission field mm-hmm. became something that was so evident. And how I know it is that every single one of us, when we're out in public and we see somebody who has Down syndrome, we're we, weird about it. We act like we saw the most famous person in the entire world. We go, <laughs> we just like, we're like, look, 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 look. I'm like trying be? to figure out how I can say hey. I'm like, hey. Hi. You, you, okay. Um, it's just incredible. But uh, I just think, I mean, we are so thrilled to see them. We are so excited uh, be, because... We we're know what a we're joy in this club James together. has been. We're in the same club. We we know, they know, we know. Yeah. It's yeah. like a gift. It's incredible. God, so. And I think God has opened up opportunities for even us, even living far away. Um, whenever I see somebody who has special needs, to be able to talk to their parents, to talk to them, to talk to their siblings, mm-hmm. and to not, um, what I love is it's not a club where we commiserate. It's oh. a club where we celebrate and mm-hmm. declare that life is good. We don't say we don't say, hey, we're not gonna, we're going to pretend that the hard things aren't hard. The hard things are hard, but we're, we know that God's going to sustain us in the hard things. And the gift is so outweighs the hardships. Mm-hmm. And so it's just such a beautiful thing. I'm so grateful that it's part of our life mission yeah. uh, to to uh, interact and to connect in the club yeah. of, uh, of families with special needs. We have a lot of Jamesisms that we say all the time, and um, we, we there's so many so many things that we just it, you know from our language to how we do things. It, it, he's changed everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but this is probably not going to be the last time we talk about James in uh, Life with the Lions. But we just wanted to give you an idea of why we are the way that we are, you know. And a lot of it has to do with James. So thanks so much for watching this episode. We'll see you later.